a specialist of Specialist Children's Hospital Peradeniya, Chief Commissioner of St. John Ambulance Sri Lanka, and Patron of Life Guidance Center Candy. We warmly welcome you, sir. So, before we start this session, I kindly request our participants to mute your microphones and turn off the video for less interruptions during the session. And also, please fill the Google form to mark your attendance when it appears on the chat box. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much and uh, good evening to everybody. And uh, I welcome you all from my side and for this uh, short seminar on this life-saving skills that is first aid. And I will go through important, some kind of important topics today, uh, which you might be uh, able to understand because I am trying to explain it in a very simple way. To begin with that, uh, I would like to introduce myself first. So I am going to talk about the safety at home and at workplace, how to save a life in an emergency situation. At present, I am working as a child specialist in children's hospital, uh, Peradeniya. And uh, I'm also working as a voluntary service that is Chief Commissioner, St. John Ambulance Brigade of Sri Lanka. Uh, in that organization, we are teaching first aid and other training programs. And also I'm working as a patron of Life Guidance Center Candy, which is uh, uh, which we are doing this uh, healthy mind and various topics uh, about public seminars and various things. So anyway, I obtained my MBBS degree in 1991. Then I become a, became a consultant in 2000 as a child specialist. And I'm a St. John member since 1979. And I'm doing this kind of a state lecture since 1984. Most of you would have been born at by that time. So since 1984, I'm doing this for state lectures. And also I'm doing uh, public seminars since 1986. That is just about me. And what I'm going to talk is about that uh, first aid. Uh, most of you are aware of it, that topic. But uh, I want to take you all through this uh, importance of first aid also, because when you know something, uh, why it is important, how it is important, then it is easy to understand and remember the things. So for example, if you come across an illness or accident, whatever the type of disaster, then there are some effects on that. Due to this disaster or the illnesses, it can affect human breathing, circulation or consciousness, and also they can have fractures, various damages. This is very basic because after illness, injury, or in simple way, it is a, any kind of accident, the person can have problems with his breathing circulation, consciousness, and also he can have fractures and other damages. So what we should do? Generally, the society or the social response is what? As you all have, might have seen even in the TV news and various instances, so you also might have done that. Everybody want to rush these patients to the hospital. They want to find a vehicle and they want to go the as much as fast to the hospital. Now I will try to explain you what is the disadvantage of this. Only one aspect I am going to talk now. Now, if something happened at home, for example, small baby who got some illness and he stopped breathing. Common instance is that milk aspiration. In small babies, the milk can go to the respiratory side and they can stop breathing. Now, world over it is well known, when a person stop breathing for more than three minutes, within three to five minutes, 
his heart stops automatically heart stops automatically when the heart stops of a person for example that baby will assume after another 3 to 5 minutes he dies so this is the usual cycle if somebody uh, stop his breathing due to illness or injury or whatever his heart stops automatically in 3 minutes time another 3 minutes time he dies so it is accepted though it is told as it is a golden 6 minutes to save a life golden 6 minutes you might have seen that uh, news item about this no fuel and they couldn't bring the baby to his hospital and died that is also a very unfortunate situation i wonder whether these parents are aware what to check and how to give breathing and things at the end of this session you will know if he is running for the fuel meantime they should have look into this matters then you can prolong the life until you take to the hospital so it is called golden 6 minutes it is very essential to give this public message that is when there is a injury illness or whatever the kind of things affecting his breathing and circulation and consciousness like things first to think of first aid what you can do at home at workplace and then only you have to think of hospital that is the good way of working and thinking so keeping that in mind we will uh, just go through another basic fact now our life depends on what there are things called vital organs you know the lungs heart brain liver kidney these are kind of five vital organs in our body to maintain our normal life but when it is a emergency situation that mean if it is in a injury or like things we we have discussed earlier so in an emergency situation there are three organs becomes very important out of that very very important ones are the lungs and the heart so brain also becomes important number 3 now if we if we can't look after these three organs in an emergency situation then that person is going to die that is the same message i told if somebody it stop his breathing there is no oxygen to the body then his heart can't work because without oxygen heart can't work when the heart is dying then they can't pump the the body can't pump the blood so blood is not going to the brain brain also going to die this is what it happens during this kind of emergency situation so uh, what we are going to talk about today is that what is uh, the we are going to talk today is first aid what does it mean generally the first aid means it is a basic skill accepted you have to use the accepted principles and you have to use whatever the available facilities at the time of that emergency situation and first aid is defined as the help given until you hand over the patient to a doctor or a hospital this is what is basically meant by this first aid so it is a organized program that first aid is an organized program you have to follow for your for, to improve your life skills and there is a standard programs which is almost two days program that is the international standard so just understand what is this uh, word means first aid now this is an example you can see a major accident there are so many patients or casualties and uh, there is a team who is wearing uniforms they brought all the equipment stretchers and somebody is giving saline and various things they are doing this is in a developed country we also have some kind of this service now sua seria but in developed country there are teams called paramedic service they are well equipped they are well trained they have the facilities and they come for the emergency calls and they give the basic even treatment at the site of uh, accident 
so in that kind of a situation the patient's lives are very safe but it is very expensive the developing countries so the poor countries can't afford it so still we have to rely on or depend on first aid we can't depend totally on paramedics still but it is better if we can have paramedic services all the time so in our our sit setup it is very very important to have this first aid knowledge now in an emergency situation if there is a one to one that mean first aid or the helper is only one and patient casualty is also one no problem but if there are more than more patients more casualties at the time of accident or some kind of blast or whatever then we should know how to work in that situation that is the first thing you have to learn in first aid that is called mass casualty incident management how to handle this crowd mean if there are more than five patients and you are alone then you should know how to handle it because it is very very important to give the first aid or look after the or give the care for the most serious patient first so there is a accepted way of acting in this kind of situation now i will just go through it very briefly now this is uh, one thing there's a one rule in first aid and other situations also it is there that is safety first and safety always so safety first is the most important thing now the question comes who is safety that is the next thing. the number one safety is for the first aid of you are safety if you are the one going to help it is your safety first then number 2 is not the patient safety it is the observer safety because you know there are various people and in huge numbers they will come to witness they will chat and they will say that and this there are so many people to do that so it is our responsibility as first aiders to make sure they are also safe then the number 3 is the patient safety or the casualty safety so remember that first your safety second observer safety third patient casualty safety now after making sure this safety that mean we have to look after the this yourself and the other two groups we have to protect them from various things fire water gas chemicals um or even building materials it can fall onto you so that is necessary that is providing the safety then second thing is that you have to call for help earliest possible so now in our country also we have this uh, suicide area and various ambulance services so you can call for help that is also important because they also need some time to come to that place so if somebody else also there you can ask that person to give a call and inform about there is a accident like this we are expecting so many patients so we need help that message should go to that team then third is the how to act how to act afterward now now we have make sure that safety is there then we have asked for the help then we have to act now i will show you how to act first thing now we will see that this is the incident place so there are some casualties there casualties means patients in this kind of situation in medical terms we use the term casualties so there are so many casualties in that area affected area now we are we think that we assume that this first aid is going to that place now to help now what is needed first thing is that when you are enter into a place where the so many people are affected you have to introduce yourself you have to say you came for help that is essential you have to say that you came to help them and to give necessary care 
that the introduction is important. Then you have to say second thing. Those who can move or walk, please go out of this place. That is what you have to request. You know, there can be some people who had very minor injury, but they are frightened. They are, because of this fear, they don't move. So in this example, three, five, there are about 10 patients. All these green color ones are less affected ones. They are also in that field. Now, if you are going to give the first aid or the care for this 10, it is difficult. Because you have to give care for the 10 casualties. But if you ask the movable people to move away, then this green one, two, three, four, five. Green, five green casualties will go to outside of this danger area themselves. Then what is the easiness? Then there will be only five patients or five casualties remain. Now how to select out of this five to whom to give the priority? There's a third step. That is, you have to tell them, those who can shout or talk, please shout for help. Ask them to shout. So then uh, somebody will say, my leg is hurting, please help me, like that various way they will shout. Now what is your action next? The fourth step is, now you have to identify out of those five who are silent. The silent ones are the most serious in scientifically we consider as most serious. Why? We call it verbal response. The people, those who can talk, make noises, mean they are breathing. Without breathing, you can't produce sounds. So we know that those who are shouting, asking for help, their seriousness is less in relation to silent people. So it is easy to remember because we have this in the common uh, society also. We know that silent people are more dangerous. So same thing applicable here also. So what you have to understand is that the silent people are more serious among the casualties. Right Now it is decided that no verbal response means they are high risk. So we have to give the care first for these silent people. That is because we are not sure whether they are breathing or not. Why that is important? Because world over accepted that there are three things which is needed in emergency situation. These are the most important three things. It is called ABC. Now, A mean airway. So the, the person should have a good open airway, clear airway. Otherwise, he will die. Second thing is, no point of having a good airway if he is not breathing. So he should have adequate breathing. Then only he can exchange the oxygen and take in oxygen, put out the carbon dioxide. So it is necessary to have open airway and adequate breathing. That is B mean breathing. Then no point of getting oxygen if you can't distribute it throughout the body. How it is distributed by circulation. Blood is going through the whole over the body. So adequate circulation should be there. That is called C. It is the world standard. Whenever in a first aid somebody says give ABC, that means this is the three things they mean. So that is very, very essential to remember A, B, C. Open airway, adequate breathing, adequate circulation. Right. With that, we will just see how we can provide an open airway. Now, you might have seen there are some instances where a person become unconscious or he is uh, having a, uh, he, he is uh, having fainting episode and then later he can go into the unconsciousness. Now, what are the people, what are the things the people are doing in the society? They find a long bench, put on that. Up. Or in a bus, the last seat. They put him on that seat and go to the hospital. 
now you have to remember that that is that process itself enough to kill that person why now this picture shows try to understand that when you are in a upright position mean you are looking up sleeping while you are supine we call it supine position or in simple way you are sleeping looking up what happens if you are not conscious your tongue is not working that is why only conscious people only can uh, lie others can't so if he is not conscious what happens this tongue become heavy same experience some people might be having when you go for the dental doctors when their injection is little bit here and there your tongue become numb and then you can feel a heavy tongue heaviness of the tongue so it is easy to understand in the, for those people so when you are unconscious when you don't have consciousness your tongue is becoming heavy so due to the gravity it falls down to where it falls down falls down into your throat and it is blocking your airway it is blocking your airway so now imagine if there is a person who loses loss his consciousness and in front of you you are just keeping him in a sleeping position but upright looking up itself that pos- that position itself can kill that person so it is very very serious and very very essential to understand this fact whenever you are taking a person who is not fully conscious and if you are keeping him on a bed or a bench or whatever you have to keep his head bit uh, tilted to the upper side I mean move you move his head backwards like shown in this picture when you are moving his head backward what happens the tongue is moving forward then when the tongue moves forward his airway is open that is what is necessary so hereafter remember that if somebody is unconscious don't keep him in upright looking upward without moving his head backwards even if you are taken by ambulance or a vehicle to the hospital you have to make sure that this position is maintained otherwise within 5 10 minutes he can die so it is most important message today second thing if there is something is obstructing that mean uh, another then now this is the obstruction is due to the tongue but there can be obstruction due to the foreign objects like in children it is very common toffee or certain foreign objects even uh, solid items when they are eating get stuck even in adults elderly people it is very common then there are two three measures you have to take if there is something blocking your airway or another persons if the person is conscious ask him to cough vigorously powerful cough bend down and powerful cough then it will come out if it is in a higher position it will come out but if that fails or if the person is not uh, not conscious enough to cough out or if it is a child he won't do that then there is a thing called back blows you can apply sudden pressure with palm lower part of palm of your hand and you have to give this apply this pressure to the midpoint of the back that is between shoulder blades that should be a vigorous and powerful blow because uh, you no point of just having a slowly and uh, softly because you have to hit or you have to give this back blows either the foreign object should come out or the lungs should come out otherwise no use so it is a uh, very essential to give it powerfully otherwise it won't work and world over it is shown that through the research you can try this for about maximum 5 times back blows because in research it is shown if it is coming out usually it comes out within 5 times so 
better try that with correct method and remove the foreign body. Now in a babies, you can do like this. You can take him to the hand like this and give the back blows. That is also very important. Now, why this is important? Now, you know this uh, children, they eat uh, rambutan and sometimes that seed goes down and obstruct their airway. If somebody do this process procedure, then and there, it is very easy to remove the foreign thing in the airways. Now, sometimes we have seen in the news item about a few years ago, even paracetamol tablet caused death in a child. And even this, um, uh, some seed types and coins, they die. But what is the simple thing they have to do? Take into the position that head in low position and give this back blow. Then it will come out. Once it comes out, air is open, he will start breathing. So he is surviving. He is surviving. How many times we have seen that if something blocks the airway, they just take the baby uh, up and they rush for a three-wheeler and coming very fast to the OPD. By the time they reach OPD, six minutes gone, so his survivable time is gone. So unfortunately, they, they die. So it is very, very important to have this knowledge this is called choking in medicine. Choking means this is the obstructing the airways. Immediate action is necessary. You have to remove it and then you have to proceed further. That is the message I want to give you all. Then, now with this, it is the respiration comes, breathing, second one. That is the airway we talked about, then breathing. Now, how to check for a person's breathing? It is very easy, as I told earlier, verbal response. You ask some question, if he's answering, he's breathing. So don't worry about if a person is answering from the other corner on your phone call, he's breathing. No need to even think anything, he's breathing. Because nobody can talk without breathing. So if somebody is uh, showing some kind of noises, sounds, talking, he's breathing. Now, if a person is not talking, no any noises, then you will have to check for breathing. For that, as in this picture, you can look at the chest and you can bring down your ears close to the patient's nose. Then the air flow, you can hear and feel from your ears and from your eyes, you can see the chest is moving. That is the easy and standard way of examining for breathing. So if you want to check for somebody's breathing on a road, who is in the room, just look at, don't go closer. Just look at whether his chest and abdomen is moving, tummy is moving. If the chest is moving, that means he's breathing. Another clue, another factor is that, look at his color. Lips, tongue, nail beds, those are the places. So the fingertips, those are the places to look for. If there is a blue color, bluish discoloration that is called blue color that means he is not breathing properly because when there is no adequate breathing no adequate oxygen so our this pink color or the red color is maintained with oxygen if there is no oxygen then it become blue so this is important to remember that if you have a known person or in your home or wherever asthmatics asthma is a breathing problem. The seriousness of the asthma is evident by this blue color. So if somebody is getting blue color, immediately you have to take him to the hospital without waiting. So you can check for this breathing and if he's blue color, that means his breathing is not good. So you have to assist him. You have to help him to maintain his oxygenation. How to help? How to help? Even this is simply, this can happen in a babies in the night when they are drinking milk in a cold days, their nose is blocked sometimes. So the milk can go into the respiratory side, breathing side, and they can suddenly stop breathing. Then he will become blue. 
and he will not breathe immediately we have to help him to breathe how it is called artificial ventilation mouth to mouth breathing so this picture shows in a adult how to give the artificial ventilation we have to just cover his mouth with your mouth and blow air into the chest while closing the nose not your nose it is the patient's nose we have to close then this air goes to his lungs and he you can provide some oxygen for this person so that is the life saving measure if this kind of situation arises in front of you for your known person unknown person you are relative you are not relative but try to give this breathing if you give that you can save his life you can save that is a uh, very very essential because at the beginning i told if he stop breathing within 3 to 5 minutes he will stop his heart then another 3 to 5 minutes he will die so only you have got 6 to 10 minutes to save this life no point of having a vehicle and going fast to the hospital because it will take more than 10 minutes with this traffic and various problems so similarly for a baby it is easy for like this you can blow air now for this uh, recent death those parents would have done this and brought to the hospital they should give the breathing then you can prolong the life until he get the proper treatment that is what is missing in this media they don't teach this to the public so it is uh, very very essential for a very sick babies very sick person who is having no breathing and this bluish discoloration you have to blow air that is mouth to mouth ventilation that will save the life until you take to the hospital because oxygen is very essential uh, than the uh, fluids in the body so though the baby didn't drink milk oxygen is number 1 the circulation is number 2 so we have to blow the air and take him to the hospital immediately until you find the vehicle you have to give this blowing should be continued right now this is the equipment we use in the hospital because uh, very frequently we have to give breathing uh, we have to assist them for breathing so we have this equipment that is used to give artificial ventilation in hospital setup and some of the ambulances also we use it uh, because it is easy and uh, it is not very uncomfortable some people don't like to give this mouth to mouth ventilation for unknown person yes that is acceptable it is world over accepted uh, sometime we tell them to put a uh, some kind of piece of cloth and blow but still some people doesn't like we can't force them to do that it is your option your choice so this kind of equipment that problem is not there you can just squeeze the bag then they are goes in and it comes out so that is about uh, breathing now remember the example i told because i am working as a pediatrician a child specialist since 2000 now almost 22 years uh, and i am working as a doctor for almost 30 years now and i am teaching for state for now more than 40 years or 35 38 years so we have seen this things happening still we used to see because people don't rely on first aid they rely on hospital you have to take to the hospital there is no argument but you have to give the at least you have to blow air to his mouth and then take to the hospital while taking also for the babies you can give the this artificial ventilation so that part i think clear then the we'll move to the c that is uh, adequate circulation now circulation to have this adequate circulation we have two components one is heart so heart should beat properly you know the heart is heart is start beating before our birth and it goes on beating 
till our death. So that is the fastest working organ in the body, heart. That produces the pressure necessary to send blood throughout the whole body. So that is one component. Second component is blood vessels. We have two types of blood vessels, arteries and veins, which takes out of the heart, the blood taken to the whole body and collecting it and bringing it back to the lungs and heart. So to have the good circulation, you should uh, the person should have both intact or intact blood vessels and normal heartbeats. So we know that heart is beating at a rate of 60 to 80 in an adult. Now, we should know how to check for this circulation, especially for the heartbeat. It is, uh, it is well known that you all might have heard this pulse. By examining pulse, you can examine the pulse in the neck on one side. You can keep your two fingers on the one side, then you can feel there is some crushing or the, or the, some pressure below your fingers, that blood vessel is, uh, you can feel the blood vessel, that blood flow, that is called pulse. So you can check for that. And also if there is no adequate circulation, now early I told, if there is no adequate oxygen, they become bluish. But if there is no adequate circulation, they become pale or the white color. Now pink color skin become white. So for, from that you can decide his circulation is affected. So two things you have to remember, bluish color, that is respiration. Uh, pale color or the white color is indicating poor perfusion, poor circulation. That is what you have to do. So if that is there, which means there seems to be a cardiac arrest. We call it cardiac arrest. That means heart is not working. It is a very, very urgent situation because only you have three to five minutes to save this life. Now, why this is important to remember and learn this? You might be having above 40 years people at your home, your parents, your relatives. They are high risk of getting heart attack because heart attack is the number one killing uh, factor in the, all over the world. Though so many wars there are, whatever the injuries there are, disaster there, still most of the people die because of heart attack. So whenever the heart attack comes, there is a high risk of cardiac arrest, meaning heart can stop. So if the heart stops, now repeatedly I told, you have got only three to five minutes to save his life. So it, knowing that what to do in that situation is very, very important to save that life. It may be you are relative at home or somewhere, or you are a known person. So nobody knows at what time heart attack will come. There is no time frame or time limit. Nowadays, after 28, 30 years, everybody's at risk because of the stressful and various other causes. But earlier we used to say after 35 years, now those things are changing. Now I am going to tell you how to reactivate the heart. But it is not easy as artificial ventilation for breathing problem. Now somebody stops breathing, it is very easy. You can blow air. But this one is a bit complicated, but I will try to make it very simple. We take it as a three groups. Very young babies and infants that is below one year like then one to eight years and above eight years as adult. In this case, we are taking as adult. So for the infants, for the babies, you can keep these two fingers as shown in this picture and press their chest, lower part of the chest. Lower part, there is a bone middle of the chest. That bone, you can, uh, you can take the lower one third of the, that bone and press downward. By that, we are assuming that we are pressing the heart to restart. It is very, very essential to do this. So if that baby, which we were referring, that unfortunate incident, they should have tried artificial ventilation, cardiac massage, and brought to the hospital. That is the only way of saving a life. So that is very essential. Unfortunately, still our people don't know that. So infants, 
below one year, you can press like that. If the child is more than one year, little bit bigger child, you can use your whole one hand to press the chest. Because this chest wall should go down one third from total height, as shown in this one. One third. You should press his total height of the chest should press down one third of total. Then if it is adult, you can keep both hands and press. I will more elaborate on the adults. Now this is what it's shown. There is a one first picture shows bluish area. That is the place you have to press. And this is how you have to keep the hands. And you have to press down at least one third of his total chest height. So if somebody in front of you develop or get, got heart attack, immediately place him in this position and start pressing his heart or chest. If you start immediately, within one or two, three minutes, his heart will start working again. That is the benefit of knowing this. So if heart attack causes cardiac arrest or the stopping of heart, you have to do it immediately. Even in children, if due to any other reason, stopping heart means you have to press the chest. Now there is a, another issue comes because if the heart stops, he is not definitely he is not breathing also. So there is a way of uh, there is a accepted proportion how to give this. That is, you have to blow two times and you have to press thirty times, thirty into two. That is called basic life support. You press thirty times, give ventilation or the breathe in twice two times again thirty again two thirty two go on doing that until you take him to a hospital so while on the way also you have to do this that is the essential thing to save a life now there are new things also coming up not actually new new for the sri lanka for us that is there is equipment which is helping to restart the heart. The only problem is this equipment is not available most of the places. So that is called AED, Automated External Defibrillator. This is the kind of machine which is shown in this picture. This machine has two wires and with two pads like things. Then you have to keep it in the chest as it is shown in the picture. And it gives a shock wave, kind of a controlled, modified electrical current, which gives a message to heart to restart. So by research, it is shown that this is very effective to restart certain people's heart or certain condition, in certain condition. So if we have this, it is better use. If you don't have it, Right, you can continue with the previous early I told 2 to 30 proportion that is basic life support. But if it is there, you can use it. Now in Sri Lanka, we don't have it in a much most of the places. The airport they have in certain big hotels they have, and other places we haven't seen because it is a bit expensive and uh, you can use it for one, only one or two years only. Moving further, now we were talking about adequate circulation. First part is heart. Second part is bleeding, blood vessels. Now, bleeding also a killing condition. If, if somebody start bleeding through a wound after an accident, unless you control it then and there, he can die. So what, what, uh, what are the simple measures we can do? It is called compression. You apply some pressure to control the bleeding. Then lift it up the more than the heart level to use the gravity to control the bleeding. And use some ice if available and make it cold surrounding skin. By that, we are, uh, we are making it less bleeding. And another rule is that if something is pricking his body, or if there is a impalement or a, some stick or something is going inside the body, we don't remove it. Even in stab injuries, knife is inside, don't remove it. While it is there, you have to control the bleeding and take him to the hospital. 
So this is a simple example. You can just use some kind of piece of cloth and uh, cover his bleeding point and uh, just it, that's it. But what is important to know is that if there is a serious bleeding, that is called shock, he can go into the shock. Then what to do? If there is a serious bleeding, you have to keep the patient like this. That is head low and legs up. That is to save the brain because it is easy to send the blood to the brain in this position. So you have to keep in this position. They will be feeling very cold in severe shock or the serious this bleeding. So cover them with a bed sheet or suitable cloth, some kind of bed sheet, blanket, something like that, and keep it in this position. Whenever the vehicle is available, put into the vehicle, take her to the vehicle and keep the head low in the vehicle also, inside the vehicle also, take for the medical treatment immediately. So that is what you have to do. So those who also were bleeding profusely or the series seriously bleeding, they should be kept in this position and uh, that is life-saving, very important. Now, finally, it is about consciousness. Now there is a thing called consciousness means the awareness about yourself and outside, external environment. As long as you are conscious, you can protect yourself. As long as you are conscious, you can protect yourself because you feel the pain, you feel the discomfort, uh, so you can uh, avoid it. You feel hungry, you eat. When you are sitting, uh, sitting for a long time, when you feel numb, you change the position. But one, what happens if there is no consciousness? That is called unconscious. If there is no consciousness, then you can't protect yourself. That is the danger. If a person is unconscious or no consciousness means he can't pr protect himself. So his life depends on the other's hand. How to examine for consciousness? One thing, asking question, what is your name? What happened to you? Like that, we can ask short questions. If he's answering well, he's fully conscious. If a person is not responding like that through answering, then you can ask something to do. Put your tongue out, open your eyes, or lift your right hand like that we do in the hospitals. So that is to check his level of consciousness. That is called commanding. If he is not responding to that, we apply some pressure over the chest. Actually, it is not pain. It is an intense uh, sensation. We just press on the skin and see whether he is responding. So those are the ways how we can check for consciousness. Now, by chance, if you find... Uh, uh, unconscious person, you should know what to do. It is essential for unconscious person to, if you don't know what has happened, what is the incident, better look around to see whether there is a possible fall from height, from the tree, from roof, like that. Because they can have neck injury and the spine injury. Because neck and spine injuries are very serious. If you don't handle it properly, they will become total disabled throughout their life. So you have to think of it whenever there you found a person unconscious. But if you know that he was on the bed then, then he is unconscious, there is nothing to worry about the fractures or the anything. Otherwise, you have to think. So number one is ABC. Always it is ABC. So you have to provide him good airway, good breathing, good circulation. So if it is necessary, give the artificial ventilation, those things. But unconscious doesn't mean he's not breathing because unconsciousness, people can stay for even months without uh, having any problem if we give the other care properly. Then you have to think of any other injuries, especially uh, poisoning or even taking drugs. Those are common, becoming common nowadays. So that also I have to think. Then for an unconscious person, 
never give anything to eat or drink. Because to drink and eat, we should have consciousness. Otherwise, it will go to the other way around. It will go to the lungs, breathing side. And that can kill the person. So no food, no drink. Then you have to keep this person in a recovery position. Now earlier I told in the beginning itself, if you keep the person on sleeping position, looking upward, it can block his airways. So there is a way of keeping these people that is turned to a side. And while keeping on that position, while you are checking or the examining for the ABC, take him to the hospital. Take him to the hospital. That is the next step. Then this is how you can keep him. This is called a recovery position. So turn to a side and keep his legs something like this. It is very stable position and his head is a bit lower than the heart level. So brain gets the good oxygenated blood. And if he vomits, there's a less risk of aspiration. So it is recommended, highly recommended to keep in this position, providing there are no spinal or the neck injuries. If somebody is having uh, fractures of the neck, and the spine, you don't turn him to this position. Then you have to keep as he is, as he is in whatever the position and you have to use cervical collars and various other things are there. It is better to call for an ambulance or the paramedic help while you are carefully providing the ABC. So those are the things which we have gone through now that is First thing is we discussed about mass casualties, how to handle them, how to select the to, to select the most serious patient. That is first part. Then we told for an emergency situation, life depends on A, B, C. Then we told, discussed about providing airway. That is, if he is unconscious, keep the head backward, lifted. Then or return into a recovery position. Then if there's a foreign object inside the airways, asking the person to cough out or giving back blows. You can try it five times and then take to the hospital providing ABC. That we discuss. Then we discuss about breathing, adequacy of breathing. Remember, if somebody is not breathing, bluish color, it is not the hospital, it is the artificial ventilation. Mouth to mouth breathing. Blow air into his lungs. That is essential. When you are taken to hospital also, you have to do that. Then we discuss about heartbeat. If the heart is not beating properly, he becomes pale or the white color. And you can't feel the pulse. Answer is you press the chest. That is called external chest compression. Through that, you are trying to restart the heart. That we discussed. Then I discussed about bleeding. Bleeding is a killing condition unless you stop that. If you control the bleeding on the site, that means wherever it happens, if you control the bleeding then and there, you are doing a good service. Because if you control the bleeding then and there, there is no need to give blood transfusion. No need to give blood for that person. His life can be saved without giving blood. That is also a good service. That is there and you can save his life. So we have discussed that bleeding to control it. If, in a, if he is in having a serious bleeding to keep the head low position and to take to the hospital immediately. Then finally, we discuss about consciousness. Consciousness is necessary to look after yourself. If you are unconscious, somebody else have to look after you. So similarly, if somebody is unconscious, you have to look after him. Two things. One is you have to think of whether he has fallen from a height then you have to be very careful because he might be having neck injuries and the spine injuries. Then you can't move him. You have to get the uh, good help from non-people. And if that is not the case, no injuries, but he's unconscious, turn him to a recovery position, keep him like that, don't give anything by mouth and call for a vehicle or ambulance, take him to the hospital. So, it is the final stage is that transporting casualty. 
now you have to go take the casualties to the hospital or a patient to the hospital there is no argument as i told several time but provide the abc first without abc transporting is not useful because he might die on the way so it is essential that first aid first and hospital second first aid first and hospital second so we have this surgery also now you can call their help but while they are coming you have to go on this thing so at the end what you have to realize is that there are so many instances where people are just crying and blaming something else but they are not doing their part at home while bring into hospital so it is essential this golden 6 minutes is very important to utilize it properly and give that life saving care properly and then bring to the hospital this is what my target today is to is to highlight you all on that and to awake you all about this subject so if you need you can learn about the full things about a uh, first aid course it is better to have a first aid knowledge complete knowledge with a certificate then you have a legal coverage also so if you need you can contact our organization also st john ambulance brigade so apart from that we are doing i am doing this uh, public seminars various seminars i am doing since 1986 well the mind that is successful life for the children and child management skills that is since 1992 then adolescent crisis and parents responsibility that is since 2003 then developing mental concepts in children since 2010 and professional sense society that is about how a professional should behave and how professional should live how to balance their life that is since 2015 so i was doing these programs very well before this covid season but after that we did some programs through online and now again trying to start this physical program because uh, to provide the good or the happy and good this uh, uh, safe and happy childhood we should cover all these categories so as a child specialist i am trying my best to do that Uh, teaching first aid is very very minimum now my from my side uh, i am doing other lectures so that is enough i think uh, so thanking you all and if you need any kind of uh, things to clarify you can contact through this means and also you can uh, ask if there is time enough time now uh, i should i can try to clarify it so try to learn first aid because that is saving life what i told today also enough actually to save that but i didn't discuss the specific illnesses i just went through the common topics only uh, so i wish you all the best and uh, i am uh, i am really happy to spend this time with you all because it is very uh, good team and good opportunity then uh, thank you everybody and uh, there is anything we can clarify thank you again thank you dr nilam so it was a very interesting session and i'm sure that almost everyone got a good idea about the things we knew slightly and also learn new things so now it's time for the audience to direct your questions you can turn on your microphones and ask or else you can put them into the chat box one question in the in this uh, chat box that is uh, what are the risk and limitation of a stead yes there is a risk uh, because in the last uh, covid period for two years we have changed everything now i didn't mention it nowadays because it is not in the existing now we are thinking that it is not a serious matter now 
because uh, when you are closer to the patient you can get illness from him uh, but the serious illness we are bothered about recently is covid the other risks involved with hepatitis aids because through the patient's blood if it goes to your uh, finger cut so any kind of injury is there it can get into your body but just blowing air doesn't get that illness that's why we asked to keep a piece of cloth and blow air uh, that is there so there is a risk involved but that risk is very very minimum and negligible in relation to what you are achieving through your first aid that is you are saving a life so in that way it is not very serious but if you take precautions even you can prevent this few illnesses also thank you doctor wish you had a very interesting training session today i'm pretty sure that we all learn a lot about handling emergency situations as and when it happens i am at loss of words to thank dr j m nilam for providing an awareness on basic first aid tips and their importance by giving us his valuable time even after under busy schedule it was a pleasure to have you with us also a heartfelt thanks for the ones who joined us today with this session i would also like to make that reminder again please fill the google form which is added to our chat box to confirm your participation before winding up the session i would like to request all our participants to switch on their cameras to take a group photo